Welcome to Pavinars, webinars for the payment community. My name is Andrew Bram, and today we'll be talking about performing a literature review. Now, before we get started on my steps to performing a good literature review, I think it's important to talk about why we need a good literature review. Well, good literature reviews show readers that you have done your homework. And when you do your homework, that means you have a brief history of the problem. You clearly demonstrate what others have done. And this includes topics both inside and outside of pavements. And I'll get into that a lot more in the upcoming slides. And then also finally, what holes in the body of knowledge are you filling? The only reason we do research is to try and understand things better, which implies that we don't understand some things now. Therefore, we try and understand what holes are we trying to fill with our research. And we can demonstrate where those holes are based on showcasing existing research. A good literature review also provides an understanding of both the complexities and the subtleties of the subject. Asphalt concrete pavements, Portland cement concrete pavements, all type of pavements are very complex and there are a lot of subtleties involved and literatures really provide a foundation for building up exactly what you would like to say on the subject and addressing those three points above. And then finally, outside of your paper directed toward others, it also allows you to see how other people write. And this gives you ideas on the content and the breakdown of an accepted paper. If you're reading a journal paper, that means it was peer reviewed and accepted. And you should learn from how they present content, how they break down the subjects, how they organize things. And this includes everything from the flow of papers to transitions to the use of tables and graphs. Because a published paper was peer reviewed, it was accepted by the community, therefore it was most likely a well-written paper, and you can get writing tips and writing style ideas from that paper. And at the end of the day, this sets the foundation for your work. The literature review is the bedrock that everything else comes from in your research. So in the world of pavements, what journals should we be reading? Well, there's quite a few of them. And if you're on the rigid side, you wanna focus on the concrete pavements. If you're on the flexible side, you focus on the flexible pavements. And then there are a handful that cover both. So let's just go through the list here. First, we have the American Concrete Institute or ACI Materials Journal. This is obviously for rigid pavements. Then the American Society of Civil Engineers has three different publications for both rigid and flexible pavements. And that includes the Journal of Materials and Civil Engineering, Journal of Testing and Evaluation, and Journal of Transportation Engineering Part B Pavements. In the world of asphalt pavements, you'll definitely want to check out the Association of Asphalt Paving Technologists, or AAPT. Going back to the rigid side, Cement of Concrete Research and Cement and con Concrete Composites are uh, two journals that you can see rigid pavement publications in. Uh, these three can be both rigid and flexible, Construction and Building Materials, the International Journal of Pavement Engineering, or IJPE, Materials and Structures, and then finally, two more that can be both rigid and flexible, Road Material and Pavement Design, or RMPD, and Transportation Research Record, or TRR. These are the big ones. There are more out there, but if you hit these up, you will have covered the vast majority of pavement research, and others can be found online through search engines, which we'll cover here in a minute. Now, I also divide literature reviews into two parts. The first part is in the field of pavements. Now, because I assume if you're watching this Pavinar, which is a webinar for the pavement community, you're interested in pavement specifically, so you definitely want to make sure you go to the pavement journals and find all the articles related to the subject you're researching. I also encourage you to go to the National Cooperative Highway Research Program, NCHRP, website and check out their uh, reports. They are fantastic reports, very well regarded. Uh, very widely used in our industry. And then also some states have very good research reports as well. Two of my favorite are Texas and Minnesota. They have excellent, excellent um, 
libraries of research documents available for free download online. Many other states do as well, but these two really stand out. They do, they do a great job. I encourage you to use the Transportation Research International Documentation Database or TRID database. So if you Google TRID Transportation, it'll pop up as one of the first links. This is basically a Google specifically for transportation related documents. So it's a very targeted website. And then I also encourage you to check out RILAM which is the International Union of Laboratories and Experts in Construction Materials, Systems, and Structures. Now, they're primarily in the European region, but they have excellent, excellent resources as well with a lot of good research that has been done. So NCHRP, State Reports, TRID, RILAM, that should really, really get you set up strongly for a solid literature review. Now, chances are if you're doing research, you're doing something innovative. And chances are, if you're doing something innovative in the field of pavements, we could potentially leverage ideas in other areas, in other materials or other research areas. So I encourage you to also look outside of pavements. So for example, if you're doing cracking of asphalt, you should look into fracture. And fracture is used in all sorts of materials. It's used in steel, it's used in rock, it's used in viscoelastic polymers, it's used in all sorts of things. So take a look at some textbooks on your subject area, but outside of pavements, and use keywords and general concepts to launch your searches. You can also use the search engine Engineering Village. This is, a, again, kind of like a specialized Google. Uh, the University of Arkansas has access through the library system. Chances are your library also has access, but Engineering Village is an excellent search engine for technical articles. And then also you'll want to find typical journals in other fields like engineering fracture mechanics or I think there's a journal just called fracture. But th there's journals in those specific type areas as well. So you want to church, search those journals through their websites as well. So when you're doing your literature review, focus both on pavements, which is obviously what we're working on, but then also try and get some ideas from outside of pavements in your topic area. What do other people do? Because then we can perhaps bring some of those ideas into the pavement world. Now, the first seven, five to seven articles that you read are the hardest. I, there's no way to sugarcoat that. It's, it's my belief that reading a journal article is almost like speaking a foreign language because they're just written differently and they're not a novel. You're not going to be able to breeze through it, but I encourage you spend a lot of time on those first five to seven, but as you read more, it becomes easier and you can make more targeted re readings and searchings. Now, after finding your five to seven papers and or report, I encourage you, the first thing you should do is create your citation, as you'll use in the references. Now, some people use software for citations. Um, I, I never have gotten into that, and now I just don't have an interest in trying to learn the software. But if you're just getting started, there is software out there that helps you maintain citations. And those who do use it are, are very passionate about it, and they're uh, very excited about it. So uh, you want to create your citation either within some software package or even just in a Word document or an Excel document. You want to read the article and take notes as you're reading. And I encourage you to check out the Pavenar recorded on March 21st if you haven't already, titled Reading a Journal Article. But write down everything you think is interesting as you go through that sequence. Write down general concepts, write down new and specific terms, write down salient findings. Just write down everything. And this is why the first couple are going to take a while, because everything is new. Everything seems important. So the first couple will take longer, but as you get more familiar, reading becomes more uh, quick, quicker. And then finally, I encourage you to browse the references of these five to seven papers, because this will help you see which authors keep reappearing, because then that'll allow you to do targeted searches on authors as well as your topic. And then you can also check out which journals are referenced that you haven't searched. Uh, I showed a, a handful of journals. There are more journals out there. And if you see one on a regular basis that seems to be in your subject area, check it out and do a more targeted search. And as I've mentioned, after reading these five or seven, whatever you do, your notes will become shorter as you feel more comfortable with the subject. And it kind of accelerates and snowballs on itself. 
Now, after you've read these first five to seven, rinse and repeat. And I recommend that you find a minimum of five to 10 articles on the foundation of your topic. So these foundation topics show that you are familiar with the history of your topic. You want to make sure you reference key articles that everyone else references. And this shows that you're familiar with the most important works. So for example, NCHRP documents, those are very, very commonly referenced because they're freely, free to download. They're extremely comprehensive. They're always well done. So you want to make sure that you read those articles that everyone else is reading because people are reading them because they're good articles and they'll give you a lot of good insight. And then you also want a minimum of five to 10 of the most recent articles. And this makes the uh, reader of your article realize that you're up to speed on the latest and greatest in your field. And I have nothing but sympathy for people who are starting out now with a topic because with the internet, with these resources, there are literally thousands of articles out there that you could potentially read. No one wants to read a thousand articles, but by kind of starting with this, this core of articles, that will be a starting point, a beginning point, and over time you can grow from there. Now, you want to make sure you target articles that justify your research. You can spend a lot of time reading articles that aren't directly related to your research. And you also want to target articles that show why you made specific decisions in your research. So why did you choose to test these materials? Why did you decide this exper experimental matrix? Why did you go after this topic? Find articles that justify that. Find articles that say, we don't understand this area or more research is needed in this area, those type of things, and leverage those type of statements for your research. And I'm a huge fan of going for quality, not quantity. Sometimes I read a journal article and there's like 200 references. And I'm like, really, you know, no one has time to read 200 journal articles to their fullest. Take, you know, seven, well, 75% of those out and just focus on the really important articles that really drive home the points that you need. So I'm a huge fan of quality over quantity. Now, this is a personal preference of mine. But I like it when literature is used in the writing. It's very frustrating for me to be reading a section in a journal paper called Literature Review, where it's literally just bullet after bullet after bullet saying, this research did this, they found this. This other research did another thing, and they found something else. That's very difficult to go through, and it really doesn't show that you understand the subject area. It just shows that you're able to read a paper and regurgitate the results. So they're not only difficult to read, but they have a very low impact on justifying your work. You want the literature review to bolster your decisions. You want it to justify your choices based on other people's finding and to demonstrate the need of your research. And if you're able to do this, then you have a very high impact on justifying your work. And one way you can do this is to try and highlight similarities and differences between your research and previous research. And ask the question, does your research confirm previous research? And if yes, the concept is further justified. If no, it creates new potential research areas. And if you're in a new area of research where there isn't a lot of existing data, you can then highlight where your research falls into the existing body of knowledge. What hole did you fill? Now, as I said, this slide is kind of my preference. There is no one right way to perform and report on a literature review, but I, I'm just not a big fan of reading a laundry list of articles and saying, hey, you know, I read all these, therefore I know about the topic. I prefer them to set the foundation for your work and to justify the needs of uh, your choices. So in summary, when you perform a literature review, I believe that you should become familiar with pavement and non-pavement resources. So that means looking at specific journals in pavements, also national reports like NCHRP and RILEM and then state reports, and you should use technical search engines like TRID and Engineering Village. You need to show the reader that you're both competent in the previous work, both in 
and outside of pavements. So whatever specialty area you're in, take a look at some literature outside there. And it's always interesting to see what other people are doing, but it'll also show that you're not only competent in pavements, but you're competent in the specific area that you're looking in. And then finally, I'm a huge fan of quality over quantity. Don't read as many as you can, read the best ones and leverage them as much as you can. So find those journal articles, find those reports, and definitely leverage the best of the best. So thank you for joining me. I hope you have a great day.